Hi, I'm James Robinson, and this is my stock pick of the week. So this video, we're going to spend some time looking at the dividends and the dividend safety for, um, for manpower. So here you can see the dividends have gone up every year, uh, with the exception of 2015, they went down slightly. Um, but let me qualify that. That's total dollars paid in dividends, not dividends per share. Uh, the dividends per share have increased every year. And as you can imagine, the reason that there was a reduction in the total amount of dividends paid and not the dividends per share is that the company has been buying back shares over time. So the company's done a great job. Dividends have gone from, I don't recall, 25 cents a share in 2004 to two dollars a share today uh, they've gone up pretty dramatically uh, in the last 10 years uh, so this is a company that has a solid dividend that has been increasing their dividend every year um, so we're going to talk in at length about the dividend and the safety of the dividends so when we look at a company's dividends we look at them through four factors uh, what is the yield and growth of the stock of the dividend and how does that compare to the s p 500 what is the dividend safety in the context of earnings what is the dividend safety in the context of cash flow? And what is the dividend safety in the context of its current debt load? And more importantly, how would rising interest rates affect this company's ability to continue to pay down, uh, to continue to pay a dividend? Yield and growth. The yield for manpower is 2.71%. Uh, to put that in context, the S&P 500 yield is about 1.92%. Uh, so it's about 150% of the yield of the S&P 500 average company. The dividend growth is 21.6%, but as you can see, that's a little bit of an aberration. In 2015, the company gave a gigantic increase in its dividends. Uh, but in general, in 16, 17, and 18, the increases have been between 7 and 8%. Um, so what you're seeing is this company is increasing their dividends. They're doing it at a good rate, and they're doing it at a rate which is multi some multiple of inflation. So it's a good company to buy if you're looking to add it as a long-term hold as part of your retirement plan. Dividend safety in the context of earnings, uh, the current payer ratio is about 22.8%. Again, what that means is of the company's income, net income, how much of that is being used to pay dividends. The higher that number gets, the more the debt, the uh, dividend would be in jeopardy if the company had a bad year. So their current ratio is 22.8%, that's very low. The average payer ratio for the last five years is 18.1%, even lower. Again, to put it in context, the average payer ratio for the S&P 500 is 40%. So this company is, significant, is spent using a significantly smaller percentage of its income to pay out dividends, which means that the, the dividend uh, payout conduct in the context of earnings is very, very safe. Another way to look at this problem of dividend safety is not in the context of earnings, which can be fudged a little bit, but to look at it in the context of cash flow. Cash flow is simply money in, money out. It's a lot easier to track. It's harder to mess with the numbers. Um, so the dividend payout of free cash flow is about 30.4%. Um, the average dividend uh, payout ratio for the last five years is about 18.1%. So again, you can see this is very, very safe. It's something like 50% of free cash flow for the S&P 500. So no reason to fear uh, the ability, companies ability to pay dividends as it relates to cash flow. So next we look at dividend safety in the context of the current debt load. So what we do here is we simply say, if as interest rates increase, the amount of money used to service that debt is likely to increase, obviously. And uh, so we say, okay, let's increase interest rates and see when we start to get into trouble in terms of our ability to pay debt. So um, if interest rates went to 20% on their, uh, on their debt level, that would mean that they would have a reduction in cash flow of $164 million. Uh, the new interest adjusted cash flow then would be $254 billion. Uh, they pay dividends of 127 billion. Free cash flow minus dividends would be 127 million, which means that at 20% interest, 100% of their um, of their net income would be used to pay debt and dividends. That obviously that 100% is is not a sustainable number, but I don't believe 20% is a realistic expectation for interest rates, anyways. So in anything less than 20%, we're in fine shape. Uh, it's 71% at 15% and at 12% at 60%. So long story short, the interest, while the company has a lot of debt, it doesn't have a lot of debt relative to its income, and even 20% interest isn't going to necessitate a reduction in, uh, in paying dividends. So we look at this dividend, the dividend uh, for this stock as being extremely, extremely safe. We look at the yield as being above average. We look at the growth as being above average. So the dividends for this company is a strong incentive to buy it.